it's time for another edition of Mets Musings. Hi, this is Ron Darling. Uh, this is Skip Lockwood. Hi, I'm Ron Swoboda of the 69 New York Mets, and you're listening to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. Hello and welcome to another edition of Mets Musings. Hope you all had a great week out there. Uh, better than the Mets did, though, you know, to be honest, they went on the road and had a four and three road trip. Uh, not too bad. Went to Philly, lost the opener there, uh, left 14 men on base. Uh, the second game in the series, Michael Conforto hit a go ahead homer in the ninth to take the second game. They got away with Larceny on a home run call in the ninth to take home the third game against the Phillies, 8-7, to seven, and they took the series two games to one. They went on to St. Louis, lost the opener in St. Louis, got rained out in the second game, made it up as part of the doubleheader on uh, Wednesday. And uh, they lost in the first game 4-1. to one. And just looked awful again with the bats and used the makeshift lineup to uh, win the second game 7-2. to two. So uh, they went into Thursday yesterday and they beat the Cardinals 4-1 to one, thanks to a dominant outing by Taiwan Walker. Though once again, the men scored four runs. Uh, they left 17 men on base. And the reason they scored was the wildness of the St. Louis Cardinals pitching staff. The Cardinals pitchers walked in three runs with the bases loaded. Three runs came in on bases on balls, forced in, if you will, with uh, the bases loaded. So uh, the Mets' bats didn't exactly win the game, and they continue to struggle. Uh, Matt is We're taken to adjust the situation. We'll get to that in just a minute. But this team is still not hitting. Um, Baseball isn't hitting. So could it be something in baseball? Could it be the weather? If you remember, back in February, baseball announced that they were going to deaden the baseball. Major League Baseball made an announcement. Combine that with the humidities. The, uh, the humidors that they're all adding, um, could this be hurting the offense that they wanted to shut down some of the home run hitting? Could it be hitting hurting the offense all over the place with this new dead ball? Who knows? Um, I but I you know it's so hard to figure out what they're doing, what they want to do. On one hand, they want more offense, but then they put a dead ball in to cut down on the home runs. But it it just doesn't make sense. Nothing that comes from Major League Baseball makes sense anymore. Do you feel that way? It just it you don't know what they're trying to accomplish. And then when they tell you what they're trying to accomplish, it doesn't make sense. One thing doesn't go with the other. They want to pick up the pace of play, but they want more offense. They want more offense, but they put out a dead ball because they don't want as many home runs. I, You know, and, and you got to do something about the strikeouts. You know, maybe a little uh, teaching ball players, changing philosophy would work. Maybe there's, you know, there's rearranging uh, your swing so everything is an uppercut. Maybe that would work. Maybe uh, who cares about exit velocity? 
Maybe if you didn't talk about all of that nonsense, that would work. I don't know. But I just, I don't know what they're trying to do. And I'm a little confused with what the Mets are trying to do. But the Mets addressed the problem that they were having with the uh, hitting uh, of the offense. And, well, they hope to address that problem. Chili Davis and Tom Slater were dismissed after Monday night's loss in St. Louis. But the decision apparently had been planned for days. Alderson and Zach Scott were disenchanted, not only with the results, but more with the process. Scott had observed hitting meetings to Davis's annoyance, the source said. And what emerged in the front office's belief was a lack of individual plans, mechanical adjustments, and authoritative instruction in the meetings. So what does all of that mean? They're not pampering the hitters here. Uh, They have to do the work and and, uh, give them here, here's what you got to do. I mean, come on, you, you know, you're in the major leagues. You should know what to do. You see the ball, you hit the ball. What what is all of this individualized plans? Now the mechanical adjustments I can see. You can see a guy's shoulders flying out. Keep your shoulder in. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're looking for. You know, Sandy likes though. He likes these uh, home run uh, hitters and and uppercuts and all of that nonsense. And Zach uh, uh, Zach Scott, the uh, acting GM, is an analytics guy. And uh, you know my feeling with analytics is ruining the game of baseball. And um, maybe that's why nobody's hitting. Everybody's using analytics to hit instead of a bat. Use a bat instead of a computer printout. Ball goes a lot further. You, Quattlebaum and Kevin Howard, who are in the organization, uh, are the new uh, hitting team. You, Quattlebaum, is the hitting coach, and Kevin Howard is his ex- assistant. So, uh, Mets made a move there. And after a dominant April, Mets ace right-handed pitcher Jacob DeGrom was named National Pitcher of the Month. Among the stats, DeGrom led the NL and ERA 0.51 and strikeouts 59. Through five starts, DeGrom is 2-2, two two, scattering five runs, two earned on 16 hits with 59 strikeouts to four walks in 35 innings pitched. And he also was scratched with a sore right lat muscle. He asked for a day, extra day off, and then they scratched him from that start. It's not; it doesn't seem to be serious. Uh, he was to have thrown yesterday. No reports on uh, whether or not he did and how he came out of it. Uh, we can look and see. Um, so we're assuming that everything went well. I guess I should not do that. Uh, bad news to assume anything nowadays but um that's that's uh you know it it figures the grom uh is pitching wonderful and it's the only bright spot and you're not even gonna have that because he uh he has been uh has this soreness on his side i don't see anything at all about whether he threw and uh, whether he has, uh, he'll be ready to go. He could go this Sunday if everything is okay. And uh, that'll be great if he he comes back. Uh, Carlos Carrasco is a setback, and he's been moved to the 60-day IL, meaning he won't be eligible to come back until May 31st. He's been feeling a little... Uh, of the uh, hamstring again and they shut him down and he'll be pushed back now and the Mets placed outfielder Brandon Immo on a 10 day injured list retroactive to May the 3rd uh, catcher, Mac, catcher Patrick Mazika has been recalled in a corresponding move Nimmo left last Saturday's game against the Phillies with a left 
index finger contusion. He came in as a defensive replacement on Sunday, but hasn't hit since suffering injury. After Nimmo missed another couple of games worth of action, the Mets have elected to place him on the IL and free up a spot on the active roster. He joins J.D. Davis, who is already on the IL uh, with an issue. So uh, the, the injuries are starting to mount. That is not good news at all. But um, it's the nature of the game. At least the... Uh, you know, we've had some surprises with the pitching staff, the especially the starting rotation, with uh, with um, oh, I can't think of his name now. Peterson and uh, Walker have been uh, exceptionally good. Uh, Stroman got off to an exceptionally good start. The uh, Grom, you know, what can you say? He's just been fantastic. But, uh, you know, Stroman's been struggling lately, giving up some home runs, giving up some uh, balls hit. But uh, Peterson and Walker have been holding down their end of the deal, uh, both of them. And Lucchese struggled. Um, Look, Yamamoto pitched pretty good the other day. The Mets went with a... uh, an opener deal. They had uh, Castro pitched the first inning, and then Yamamoto came in and really pitched a pretty good three solid innings. So, um, you know, maybe he might get another shot at a start somewhere down the line. You never know. It's a long season, and we'll see how it all pales out as we go along. All right, uh, let's take a break here, and we'll come back right after this. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of barbecue. If you like baseball and if you like barbecue, then tune in to Baseball and BBQ. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and BaseballTalkRadio.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a Ph.D. in life through baseball? Welcome to Baseball Ph.D., a tour company for your brain. 30 major league teams, 100 places to see. Let's touch them all as we make the road trip of a lifetime. Follow me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Mets Musings. On Twitter at Mets Musings GM. The Instagram is Mets Musings. And on YouTube at Mets Musings Mac. Wish to be a part of the show? Give us a call at 516 619 6341. All right. And we are back in Yankees and Mets fans who are fully inoculated against COVID-19 will soon be able to pack designated sections of the Big Apple Stadium starting May 19th. Yes, Governor Grabberhands announced Wednesday separate sections of unvaccinated attendees at ballparks and other large outdoor venues across the Empire State will be restricted to 33% capacity with social distancing of six feet. The governor explained during a press briefing at his Manhattan office. All attendees will still be required to wear face masks at stadiums regardless of vaccination status. But why? If you're fully vaccinated, why do you have to wear a mask outside? It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. If you're fully vaccinated, they're going to let you sit next to one another, but you still got to wear a mask. Does that make any sense? Fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated means you're vaccinated. More stupidity from the government. But you still got to wear a mask. Makes no sense. 
that makes no sense. Children under 16 who have not yet been approved to receive any of the available COVID-19 vaccines in the U.S. can accompany vaccinated attendees. The new rules will do away with the previous state mandate that required attendees to show proof of negative COVID-19 tests ahead of a game. But now you have to show proof that you're fully vaccinated. So, uh, I don't know. I, I I will move on and keep my mouth shut. Okay, and now it's time for everybody's favorite time. And what is that? Yes, it's time for Down on the Farm. <laughs> Minor League Baseball's back. Isn't this great? Minor League Baseball's back. The Mets teams got off to a fast start. All the teams won their opener, except for Binghamton, who's struggling so far in this new season. So Binghamton uh, did not... Uh, get off to a good start. They lost their first three games. They stand at 0-3 right now. Syracuse won their first game big, but dropped the next two. They are 1-2 and two going into tonight's play. Uh, as we said, the Rumble Ponies are 0-3. The Cyclones got off to a big start. They went uh, winning their first game, but they've been struggling lately. They lost the next two, so they're one and two on the new season. Same thing for St. Lucie, who, uh, well, I'm sorry, St. Lucie won their opening, lost his second, and then won another game. So they're two and one on this young season. And, and who's gotten off to uh, three games? Who's gotten off to good starts? Well, Pete Crow Armstrong has gotten off very strong for the St. Lucie Mets. He's respaced 10 of 17, 17 plate appearances to begin his pro career. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, Brett Beatty has been red hot with uh, the Brooklyn Cyclones. He had two more doubles. Uh, he's got three on his season already. The uh, the um, Ronnie Mauricio is also on that team, the Cyclones. Um, so that looks like a pretty good team. Um, the Rumble Ponies have just uh, struggled. Desmond Lindsay is uh, on that. Mark Vientos hit a home run last night. So, uh, you know, he got that. And uh, got off the schneid with that. Got his first home run of the year. And uh, Lindsey went one for three. Uh, but they've struggled so far. The um, the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. And the Syracuse Mets, as I said, they're one and two. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, I watched some of their game and not a lot of guys on there. That you've heard of so far. I mean, uh, Khalil Lee is the big guy, of course, that uh, everybody's keeping an eye open for. Uh, Franklin Colomi, uh, he's pitched pretty good so far. Uh, Stephen Tarpley, who has uh, struggled uh, a lot lately. Uh, the other night, he got, uh, he got hammered, boy. He got seven runs in one inning. Um, and has struggled. So, uh, he, uh, he might be on his way back to Binghamton. Who knows? But, um, you know, it's very early in the season. But just, a, uh, there was a, usually you recognize a lot of the triple A guys. I was surprised that I didn't really recognize. I knew more on the double A and the, the uh, single A teams than I did on the uh, Syracuse roster, but that'll change as, as we get to see more games and watch more games of uh, of the uh, 
minor leagues. But it's exciting to have more baseball back. Minor league baseball's back. We really missed it last year. I don't think people realized how much minor league baseball means to a lot of these small towns that have teams. And, of course, 40 teams and 40 towns lost their uh, teams. At least their affiliation, uh, there are a lot of those teams that have caught on in other leagues. Um, but there are towns and teams that are gone forever. Uh, so um, it's it's a shame. But Major League Baseball gets their hands on things and they want to unify everything. And, and this is what they've done. And they've taken over... Uh, minor league baseball and now is there some good points yeah there's some good points with it um i happen to have the minor league baseball package and i have to tell you that the the uh, teams that do participate in it had to reach a higher level this year and uh it's it's improved it's much improved um you know, last year you wouldn't know the score half the time because they didn't have a score court. I think they have to have a, a score graphic on the screen now. A lot of them, will, you know, had to go to high def, uh, so the pictures are better. Um, it, it's a better product this year, and uh, hopefully as it goes along, they'll keep improving it even more, but... Um, you know, just happy to have minor league baseball back. So if the Mets are having a bad game or something, you can go check out either on the internet or on uh, if you have the MLIB package or just look at the scores. At least you, you, you've got to hope that some other team might do good. That, that's part of your organization, and that's that's the way I look at it uh, with the Mets. And I'm a big Cyclones fan, so uh, they haven't been on the MILB yet. Uh, the first six games of the season, Asheville does not uh, uh, participate in the MILB, so we haven't been able to watch the Cyclones yet. But I think next Tuesday they'll be in Greenville, and Greenville plays. So we'll get to see the first look at the Cyclones uh, of 2021. And then they'll be home on the 18th. So um, don't know if I'll be going to any games with the COVID still among us, but we'll see. Um, and uh, let's take a break and be back right after this 516-619-6341 that is our voicemail comment hotline if you have a question want to leave a comment make a statement anything at all that's the number to call 516-619-6341 or go to our website metsmusings.com and click on the widget in the middle of the screen that's a speak pipe you click the record button and you can record right through your computer's microphone. Or you can send us an email at metsmusings at gmail.com. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, it's Facebook is facebook.com slash metsmusings. Twitter is at metsmusingsgm. Instagram is Mets Musings, and YouTube is Mets Musings Mac. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you watch or listen to the podcast. And we're back. Okay, so the Mets uh, coming home. They open up three games set tonight with the Arizona Diamondbacks, who have struggled early in the season but have been playing better baseball as of late, so should be an interesting series. They'll have an off day on Monday and then a two-game set with the Baltimore Orioles as they go into interleague play for the, uh, I think it's the first time they're playing. Uh, no, no, sorry. They played Boston. That's right. So 
Uh, it'll be the second time the Mets are involved in interleague play, but um, should be an interesting two-game set. Baltimore's playing a little bit better this year, thank goodness. So uh, should be interesting. And that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. It's a little bit quick, uh, but we'll – We'll have a guest on next week to break down the Tampa Bay series that the Mets are going to go travel down to uh, Tampa Bay in some warm weather, and uh, maybe uh, the bats will wake up, uh, well, hopefully before then, but maybe they'll wake up definitely by that time. So I want to thank you all for listening and watching, and don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, CastBox, YouTube, wherever you listen or watch the podcast hit that subscribe button that helps me grow the community and expand to new listeners so until next time remember to keep the faith stay optimistic and always let's go Mets and I'll see you next time on another edition of Mets Musings <laughs>